Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video, I'm not sure what the title is going to be. I know it's going to be a devotional, but I'm not sure what I'm going to call this. Um, I might call it the other side of death. And um, it sounds insane, but we're going to have a sort of short discussion um, based off of a devotional I did on the 23rd. As I'm recording this, um, it is, what is what is today, the 26th? So I did this devotional three days ago, and it's really just been on my heart since I've done it, um, to the point where I think I'm actually going to even write a sermon on it. Um, this video is very much unscripted. And what I mean by that is I did not flesh out my points. I did not flesh out my ideas. I think when I do these like devotional videos, I'm going to just let the Holy Spirit lead me. Um, so yeah, I do have my coffee in my Daughter of Increase coffee mug. I also have my breakfast, which I made heart-shaped sandwiches. Um, they're strawberry jelly with um, almond butter and one is with cookie butter just because that's what I prefer in the morning. Something quick and simple. My coffee, I mean, you guys should know it's the donut shop coffee with um white chocolate syrup <laughs> lavender syrup um vanilla syrup and then the cold stone coffee creamer yep and four packs of sugar i did four instead of five today <laughs> but oh that was really good i felt that but okay so before i get, even get into the devotional i do want to shout out the author of the book so you guys know if you follow me on the Holy Bible U version app that I do love doing my like reading plans and their reading plans are basically devotionals um but they call them reading plans so I do them and um you guys can see and follow along with me as I do them but I like to do the ones that I have books for I've noticed that a lot of the books that come from like Baker's um Revel and things like that they have corresponding reading plans like I've mentioned the ones that Connie Lynn Cassette has and Misu Andrew has so I like to go on there and see if any of the books that I own, the nonfiction books that I own, have reading plans because I can't always get to the nonfiction books as quickly as I want to, just like I can with my fictional books. So, this is a book that I requested. I don't even know if this came out this year or was it last year. Um, let me look and see the copyright. This book came out last year, you guys. So, I've had this book for a year now. Um, and I've been wanting to read this for the longest just because it really intrigued me. The cover, first of all, stunning. But um, the title, is it really intrigued me. So recently I found that they had the, um, I think it's a seven-day devotional on the Version app. And I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check out. I am on day 26. I have, I think, two more days left. And then I'll be done with it. Um, but it's a seven-day devotional. And it's called Begin Again. The book is by Leanna Tankersley. Um, and here is the actual book. First of all, this cover is stunning. I love the teal with the pop of pink from the flowers. I love the white font and how it's scripted. It says, begin again, the practice, I'm sorry, the brave practice of releasing hurt and receiving rest. And it's by Leanna Tankersley, and I'm probably saying her last name wrong. I apologize. But um, here is who she is right here. And um, she is the author of Found Art, Breathing Room, and Brazen. I have no idea what any of those books are, but um, this one just honestly really intrigued me when I got the email from Revel, so I requested it. I haven't hadn't gotten a chance around to reading it because I have so many books, you guys know. Um, so when I saw that they had the Devo on the Uversion app, I said, you know what, let me check this out to see if the book would be in something I would be interested in. And I found that that's the best way for me to see if uh, my interest in the book is going to be great. There are some Devo plans that I've done on the Uversion app that I've just found that the book wasn't going to be something that interests me. So I do have a pile of books that I'll be giving away. But um, this one just really interests me. And for the 23rd, the devotional was called The Other Side of Surrender. And um, surrender is one of those words that we don't really like. I can put this book down now. Um, it's a word that we don't really care to um, talk about because it means letting go of control, letting go of hurt, letting go of disappointment, and just having trust and faith in God. And though we say we trust God, there are going to be those days when we really don't trust God. I know I've said that I've trusted God in so many situations, and I really didn't trust God, um, even down to me finding a job. I've been looking for work since 2013. I worked for about four months at Macy's, and um, that was probably the best experience of my life, makeup artistry-wise, just because I worked 
I was an on-call beauty advisor, basically, which meant that I could work at any counter that I wanted to work at that had available slots. But I always seemed to be working for three main counters, which were Lancome, Estee Lauder, and Clinique. And then I had a few times where I worked for Clarence and Chanel. And when I say I had the best experience, you guys, I've learned so much about skincare, um, which actually sparked an interest for me doing esthology or becoming an esthetician. But, um... You know, I, I worked there from September until December, and then I had to leave in January because um, my family, we had we had gotten displaced, and um, we had to, you know, I had to help my mom out with my siblings with the situation. I, I'll do a whole testimony video on that, but um, I basically had to stop working to help my mom out with my siblings. I am the oldest, so I felt like, you know what, I had to, you know, help out where I could. Um, so... You know, I've been looking for work ever since 2013, you guys. It's 2019. Six years. I've been looking for work for six years. And it's not that I haven't applied, because a lot of people swear that I don't, like, apply to jobs. I've applied to plenty of places. I've applied back to Macy's about four times. I've applied to Bloomingdale's twice. Um, I've applied to McDonald's. I've applied to White Castle. Like, when I say I applied everywhere, I applied everywhere everywhere and um the thing is i would get callbacks like second and third interviews but they just would not hire me even down to me almost getting a job for morphe cosmetics and um that ended up falling through and the problem with that was um i wouldn't surrender me wanting a job to god i was trying to figure it out on my own trying to find the job for myself and in doing that I kind of sort of make finding a, a job an idol because that became my number one priority in life and um it just wasn't good but we're gonna get into the devotional so so for the devotional I use this notebook here it's just a notebook I got from um Penn and Gear from Walmart really cute simple notebook um I have a bunch of these but like I said I have my notes from the Devo but it really just made me um think even deeper so i'm going to quickly read the focus scripture that was for that day um i'm going to be using my favorite bible and if you guys don't know what my favorite bible is just click the on the screen to see the review my favorite bible is the new king james spirit filled life bible it is literally my go-to bible my number one and a lot of people keep asking me if it's still my favorite yes since i made that video however many months ago that was it is still my favorite bible um I love this Bible. It has definitely replaced my King James Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson. Um, this is also a Thomas Nelson Bible, but um, the fact that it's New King James is great. And I love everything that it provides um, as far as um, study-wise and the resources. I believe this is a Pentecostal-based Bible, but I find that a lot of the articles in the Bible and a lot of the study notes are more so factual and not opinionated and even though it is a pentecostal based bible i still find that i get a lot out of it for myself so i highly recommend this bible to everyone like everyone that i've recommended this bible to loves it i do own the third edition i know there are two other editions i own the third edition and i love it i know my sister steph i believe she has the niv version um i'll leave a link to her video where you can see her review of that bible but um yeah, I, this is my favorite Bible. It's, it's, it's a chunky one, but, um, it's literally my go-to favorite Bible. So I'm going to read the scripture from out of here. Um, the focus scripture was John 12, which you guys know I love John. John is my favorite book of the Bible ever. Um, but the scripture is John 12. She focused on verses 24 and 25. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, um read all of 20 to 26 because it is a paragraph sectioned off in my bible and i have the new king james so if you guys have the new king james your section title should read the fruitful ga grain of wheat fruitful grain of wheat is what it should say um so starting at verse 20 it reads now there were certain greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast then they came to philip who was from bethsaida to Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him saying sir we wish to see Jesus Philip came and told Andrew and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus so at this point we see that um there's a bunch of Greeks that come um and this is during one of the times of the feast I'm not sure 100% which feast it is I don't know um you definitely could do your research this is just going to be a quick reading of the word so you definitely can do your research but they came to philip and they told philip that they wanted to speak with jesus and then philip then goes to andrew and so the both of them philip and andrew then go to jesus to let them know to let him know that there are a bunch of greeks that would like to basically see him um so then 
we have in verse 23 it says but jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified most assuredly i say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies it produces much grain he who loves his life will lose it and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So, again, I'm going to reread the main two focus scriptures, which was 24 and 25, which again reads, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life so here we have jesus giving one of his famous parables again you know he likes to speak in parables because it helps people to really understand what he's saying because a lot of people don't understand what he's saying because he is god um he is fully man but he's also fully god and sometimes what he says goes over their heads so teaching in parables was something that he enjoyed to do so um i'm just going to quickly read the notes that i have written down so um and these notes are strictly from the devotional that I read. So again, I will leave a link to the devotional down below. But um, the first thing that I wrote was that oftentimes something has to die in order for something new to live. And um, that for me, it took me literally like five minutes after I wrote that to like be like, wow. Um, something has to die for something new to live. Jesus says it um, in verse 24 that, you know, a grain of wheat is fine. You know, it's it's cool, but it has to fall into the ground and die to produce something. Um, a lot of the times, we like to keep things. We like to harbor them. We like to um, let them live and kind of flourish in, in a sense. And I'm, I hope I'm making sense because in my mind it's making sense. But um, a lot of the times we need to realize that the things that we like and the things that we um, want, we sometimes have to die. Um, the scripture tells us that we have to, um, in John 3.30, that we have to decrease so that God can increase. We need to die of ourselves on a daily basis. So when I wrote that um, and, and read that, that, you know, sometimes something has to die in order for something new to grow, it really made me start thinking about um, relationships that we have. Um, and I don't just mean romantically. I mean, like, any type of relationship, whether it be with a friend, family, or a loved one. A lot of the times we're in relationships that are no good for us and um, instead of letting it die we continue to let it live and that relationship almost kind of turns into like a weed and we know that weeds are bad we have to kill weeds we have to pull them out of the ground um, because they tend to suffocate other things other plants around them um, but instead of pulling out the weed we just let it grow and grow and grow and it's not doing anything but killing you. So in living, it's killing you. But if you want something new to come out of it, you have to kill that relationship. And it can be hard at times. I know for me, when it comes to certain relationships in my life, um, I didn't want I didn't want them to die. Like I tried to hold on to them because that's all I knew and it was comfortable. Um, but sometimes those comfortable things are not good for us and we have to just let them fall at the wayside and let them die. Um, then it goes into saying that death is a good thing at times for us, which I agree. Um, death in general is not something we like to face, not something we like to talk about. I know I don't personally like to talk about death because it makes me emotional. I've seen, um, I've had a lot of relatives pass away back to back and for me it's just an emotional thing. But death, though it is bad, it is a good thing. Um, unfortunately, we sometimes glorify death. And um, I'll, that'll be a whole other video on how we glorify death, because we really do. Um, but we need to remember that death itself was already conquered by Jesus um, when he died and resurrected on the third day and ascended to heaven. Simple as that. And he didn't ascend on the third day. I'm just, I, I hope you guys get that. He ascended. I hope you guys get what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> but, um, you know, he defeated death. So death itself is not something we should be afraid of. But unfortunately the world has put it in our minds that death is something that we should be afraid of so when it comes to a relationship or losing a job or um having to kill a bad attitude or something we don't like to let go um and death has to do with you surrendering 
Um, when you kill your attitude, you're putting death to that bad attitude and surrendering yourself to God so that God can now put um, a new attitude in you so that God can restore you, so that God can renew you, um, so he can, you know, refresh you. You can't be refreshed when you're still dead weight. Hopefully I'm making sense. But, um, yeah. So then it says sometimes things have to fall apart to be put back together in a different way. And for me... I think of relationships again. Um, a lot of this I'm correlating to relationships because I'm sure a lot of us have had these problems in our lives. Um, but for me specifically, the relationship I'm currently in, I've been in for seven years now. And um, we've had to start over <laughs> twice, um, literally, because it just wasn't working. And um, it's like you, you can let it fall apart so that you can rebuild or you can just kill it and just let it go. And I personally don't want to kill it and let it go just because I find it hard. We've been together for seven years. We have a five-year-old son. Um, the love is there. It's just that we there are things that need to be rebuilt. And you can't rebuild on top of current foundation, if that makes sense. Like, you have to rebuild from scratch. So in order to rebuild, you have to let it fall apart. And um, we did have to have a conversation um, in February and just figure things out now thankfully things are a little bit better um there is still obviously room for me personally to grow and for him and our relationship in general but um sometimes you have to let things fall apart and it, it hurts trust me i know um when you allow those things to fall apart at the wayside because it's just like now what like what what am i supposed to do it's something that you're used to and comfortable with but um again when you're used to and comfortable with something it can grow into a weed instead of blossoming into a flower um so yeah the next thing was th that I wrote is that on the other side of death, which is surrender, there is movement in places we lock down tightly. So, death, when, I, when I'm saying death, I want you guys to keep in mind that I don't mean like physical death. I mean surrender. So, um, putting to death a relationship means you're surrendering that relationship now to God and letting God do what he needs to do. When you put to death to something, um, when you put something to death, you are surrendering it to God. So uh, let's go back to the bad attitude. Um, I, I had a really bad attitude as a kid, like really nasty, really bad. That was like the biggest complaint my teachers had for me, um, even like my associates and stuff. So let me get a little sip of my tea, tea, coffee. <laughs> but um, when I put that attitude to death, I then surrendered that attitude to God and allowed God to um, have space now to move and to help me better my attitude. When you surrender, you give God the opportunity and the space and the room to begin to work in your life. And not many of us like that. We don't like him touching the things that we keep locked inside. We don't like him touching um, those bad habits, those negative thoughts. I know for me... I was a very pessimistic, pessimistic person, and um, you guys, if you see my testimony videos, understand why. Um, I just, I was, and it just was normal for me to be pessimistic. And um, it took me some time to get to the point where I am now, where I'm like, I'm not super optimistic, but I'm content, and I don't automatically go to negative thoughts. I try to think good thoughts, and it took me a while, ten years, just about. I've been at my church for ten years. It has taken me ten years to get to where I am now. Um, and a lot of you guys see the after product, but a lot of you guys don't know the beginning, which is why I normally tell you guys, if you want to see how I used to be, I always tell you guys to go watch my old videos on my vlog channel and my beauty channel because it you can see the difference, like not just on like a, like a physical and emotional level, but even on a spiritual level, you definitely can see a, a, a huge difference from the old me to the new me. And if I didn't surrender to God... There would not have been this new me. Um, I would not be sitting here being being able, being comfortable enough to um, speak the word, being comfortable enough to testify. I, I was terrified to ever testify, like ever. Testifying was something that scared me um, because I always felt like my story, um, people would question my story. And I need to realize that I don't have to prove my worth to anybody. Um, God already called me worthy and it is what it is. And if people don't agree with it or understand it, it's okay. Nobody's going to understand it. They didn't understand Jesus when he was here. I mean, the disciples, his own besties, you know, his own inner circle of three didn't truly understand him. So everybody's not going to understand. Everybody's not going to agree. Everybody's not going to, um, be for me. And that's perfectly okay. And it took me 10 years to get to that point where I'm just like, okay, I, I need to just surrender it all and just let it go and let it be what it is. Um, so yeah, 
then I wrote that um, you have to unseal the heart to step into a place that is not yet. And that was hard for me, um, personally for me to do. Um, unsealing my heart because I was hurt. I was disappointed. Um, I was betrayed. There, there, like, there was a lot that went into that. And um, I ended up locking my heart away, literally. Like, I just locked it away. And um, I didn't realize it. You know, it's, it's like you lock things away, but don't realize you're locking it away. Um, and for me, it was like one of those things, like, I couldn't sit in church for too long. Because sitting in church required me to open up my heart to God, and I wasn't with it. That I'm being honest. I was not with it. I did not want him to touch my heart. I did not want him to bring to the forefront those emotions that I had. I didn't want him to um, make me remember the things that I had. To, like, I did no. I was in a space where I locked it up. Let's keep it up locked away. Let me just be the person that I am. And um, you can't do that because there is no room for growth in that. Um, you can't punish yourself and grow from that. So you definitely have to instill your heart to step in a place, into a place that is not yet. And what I mean by not yet is it's not there yet. Like you physically cannot see it there yet, but you spiritually understand that it's going to come. So when you unseal your heart, you're not at a place of contentment and peace. I, you're just not. But you understand that once you unseal your heart, you're now stepping into a place that will become contentment for you and peace. So that's that. Um, the next thing I wrote was leave space for the possibility that something fluid and alive is on its way. <sighs> okay. Sorry, guys. My phone. I forgot to put it on vibrate. Let's just put it on silent. Okay. So for this, leave space for the possibility that something fluid and alive is on its way. Um, surrendering is not easy. Um, it requires you to trust and have faith. Um, it requires you to deny yourself. It requires you to focus solely on God in Christ. Not you. It's not about you. It's not about what you're feeling. It's not about what your thoughts are. It's solely about God. So um, when you surrender, you now open up. Like I said, you have this this place that allows movement. And in that place of movement, movement, you also allow the possibility for things to come to you. When you are locked up in your emotions mentally physically emotionally spiritually um there is no possibility for anything to come to you there's no possibility for you to receive um because you have a wall up and for years i had walls walls on top of walls i still have a few walls that need to be broken down and um it's, it's gonna take some time <laughs> but um when you have a wall in front of you you can't go anywhere it's like Okay, I don't know if you guys watched Spongebob. I'm, I'm only... I can, this literally just popped in my head. There was an episode on Spongebob when he was with... Um, oh, God. I don't for, I don't forgot the teacher's name. The driving instructor, Miss Pearl. Is that her name? Miss Pearl? I don't know. You know, the, the fish. The, the driving instructor. Whoever her... Whatever her name is. Um, but there was a scene um, where he had to drive on the... The track, I guess I'm going to call it a track... And there was a wall in front of him and he had to turn. When there's a wall, you can't go through it. Um, you have to go left or right. Or you have to go over it. But sometimes that wall is too high for you to even go over. So now you're not even allowing anything to come into that space that um, needs the love, needs the grace, needs the peace, um, needs the joy. I used to just have a wall up and I didn't, I didn't want peace. I didn't want joy. I didn't want love. Um... Let me correct that. It's not that I didn't want peace and joy, because I did. But when you don't allow love to come in, then you're not opening yourself to the peace and the joy that comes and the grace that comes and the mercy that comes. Um, you're pushing it away. You're blocking it off. And when you block it off, you have this empty hole. Okay? It's kind of like... Think of a well. Not even a well. I can't even say it. Think of the walls of Jericho. That's all I can think of. The walls of Jericho for me... Um, in my mind, they symbolize a um, wall that blocked out God's mercy, blocked out God's goodness. Because inside that wall, you had a lot of these pagan people. You had a lot of these people worshiping different gods and goddesses and um, just living the life that they wanted to live. They didn't die of themselves. They just lived for themselves. They didn't surrender to God. They surrendered to their flesh. So 
I don't know why that just came to me with the walls of Jericho, but it did. Um, so when you have something like a wall around your heart, you're not allowing God to love you. You're not allowing God to fix your brokenness. You're not allowing him to mend you. You're not allowing him to renew you and restore you. And um, when you don't allow that to happen, you end up surrendering to your flesh instead of God. And when you surrender to your flesh, you just hurt yourself even more. I know for me, that's what happened. When I didn't allow him to come into the brokenness, when I um, was abu sexually abused, um, when I was molested, um, when I was dealing with the situation with my dad, when I didn't allow him to let that, when I didn't allow love from God to come in, um, what I did was surrender to my flesh. And in surrendering to my flesh, I was partying, I was drinking, I was smoking, I was indulging in sexual sin. Um, I was dating who I wanted to date, didn't care what they did. And I mean, the dudes, when I think about the dudes that I dated, I'm just like, what was I thinking? But that's what I was attracted to because I surrendered to my flesh instead of surrendering to God and the word of God. And um, when you have that wall up, it, it just nothing good, nothing godly can penetrate that wall. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things def that definitely can be penetrated. But when you have several walls up like I did, nothing penetrates it nothing and like i said i couldn't sit in church services like my bishop even talked about this at my um elevation i i couldn't sit in the service i would get irritated sitting in service like really irritated because i didn't want anything to break those walls down like they would have to come and pray for me and really push me for me to begin to cry out like it it was bad you guys um and yeah so you you really need to just leave that space even if it's a small little crack in your wall you need to allow that space to make room for um, God to really come in and move for something good to be received. Because when you have walls that are cemented with no cracks, it's going to take some time and it's going to take a fight. Um, and not just on, you know, your leaders and your, your, your friends and things like that praying for you, but it's going to take a personal fight for yourself. When you have that tiny little hole in the wall that allows God to come in, it's not going to be as hard. But when you don't have that up, like, when you don't have that little tiny hole in the wall, it, it's going to take a fight. Like I said, it took me 10 years. Now, it might not take you 10 years. It might take you two years. It might take you two months. It depends. But for me, I was harboring a lot of things. I've had many walls built up. I had a lot of things locked in my heart that I didn't want exposed. Um, and because of that, it took me so long to fully break free. Um, so, yeah. Then it says that surrender is a journey that leads to life giving rest. And, oh, my God. That right there, I can close my notebook for now. Um, I agree. When you surrender, you get rest. Um, when I say 2019 has been a year of peace and contentment for me, you guys don't, like, normally when I get frustrated with something or someone, it drives me up a wall and I start spiraling out of control. And I'm being honest, I'm being as blunt and transparent as I can because I tell you guys all the time, my, I want my channel to be as transparent as ever. Um, anytime I've gotten into any type of spit or spat with any relative, friend, or whatever, I would harbor that. Um, lock it away in my heart and just become cold. Um, emotionless, wouldn't care. Um, just nothing with nothing. When I say nothing, just nothing. Um, but I told myself 2019 was my year of um, peace. Peace is my word of the year. My scripture is Isaiah 43. <laughs> You guys know I'm still trying to remember if it's Isaiah 43 or is it 41. Let me let me let me look. But if I'm not mistaken, it's 43 verses one through three. Um, yeah, 43. Um, and I found that when I surrender to God, I have the best peace, the best rest ever. Um, literally, I've been into a few spits and spats with relatives and friends and stuff like that, but it it hasn't bothered me as much as it used to because I just I like I obviously will get emotional will get upset will get angry but after I do that I sit down I talk it out with God and I leave it in his hand and move on about my day and when I say it ha that has never happened you guys like never I normally would just think about it every single minute every single day and um, it would bother me make me angry make me bitter now I'm just like oh you pissed me off all right I'll be angry for two seconds. Let me think about it. Let me listen to some gospel music. Because music really, gospel music really just helps me switch my mindset real quick. Um, I'll pray about it. 
think about it with God, and then I'll be like, all right, God, you got this. I got to leave it in your hands because I can't do it. I surrender this situation. I surrender this problem. I surrender this person, these people to you. Help me to move forward. And that's what I've been doing. And when I say 2019 has literally probably been one of the best years ever for me, ever, ever, ever. Um, and it's amazing because when you don't surrender to God, you don't get rest. You get stressed out. You get depressed. You get emotional. Um, you allow your flesh to rule you and, um, it's, it's not good. It's, it's not good. Now I'm not going to say there have, I've been like that all, all year. No, there have been moments where I surrendered to my flesh rather than to God and it made me an emotional wreck. So then I would have to come back, repent and then surrender to God all over again. And surrendering to God is a daily thing. It is a every second thing. It is not something that you do one day and you're good. No, I find that I have to surrender daily. And not just once a day. I mean, it's 24 hours in a day. So you, you surrender in about 20 plus times a day. Okay? Because you're going to, you go outside, somebody might, you might be crossing the street, somebody might almost hit you with a car. You got to be, you know, you got to surrender that to God. Because I know... If it was me, I, I'd probably have cursed the person out, just being honest, honest with you. <laughs> but um, you have to surrender that to God. I might, my son might do something that will irritate, and my son likes to push buttons. So he does things that irritate me. I mean, I love my son to death. He is the joy of my life. He is, he's everything to me. But there are some things like, <laughs> and this is literally something that happened yesterday. He left his book bag in his father's car left it in his father's car and when i say that irritated me because his father his father doesn't live like far from me he's about 20 15 minutes from me by car but that's a whole different city i was pissed like super pissed thankfully he didn't have homework but i was pissed that he left it in the car and i had to, like i now don't get me wrong i called his father and was a little upset i i got at my son i was a little angry pissed off because your book bag, come on now. His uniform sweater was in there and everything. Like, we need you need to keep your book bag on you at all times. Um, so I literally I came in the house and I vented. I, I went to my mother's room and I vented. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yesterday, I don't know why, but it was like bam, 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 bam. Not just with my son, but a lot of things, and it it pissed me off to a T. Where I had to come in my room and vent. Not in my room, but I went to my mother's room and I vented to her. And I was like, yeah, I'm pissed off with this person. And this person called me mad because of this, this, that, and the third. And I was in the flesh. I surrendered to my flesh because I was angry. Um, But, you know, she told me, she says, go in the room, go lay down. I came in my room and I sat at my table for a good 10 minutes. She came in the room. She was like, why are you not resting? I will. I literally had to come in this room, sit for a few minutes, mentally think and, and speak to God mentally. Because I was too angry to verbally say anything because i didn't want to say the wrong things out of my mouth um so i had to come and sit and surrender my feelings and emotions and um both situations to god like god you got this you're gonna figure it out you have to you have to do it you have to um so that's what i had to do and after doing that i was so angry because it's not like when you surrender your feelings to god you're gonna be you know like that like this is not that um at least not for me but after doing that, it took some time, but I started to feel okay, and I, I didn't even do any work. I went straight to bed. I, I got into bed, laid down, read for like an hour or two, and knocked right out because I I had to. But um, if I would not have surrendered that to God, I would have been up all night stressing, like all night stressing. Because if you're, if, if, you're, if you're a parent, if your child has ever left their book bag in another place where it should not have been, and they had school the next day, you would be irritated too. It's just like, okay. You got school tomorrow. You're supposed to be in there because they got a homework folder. They didn't, they didn't have homework, but they have like daily homework of reading for 10 minutes a day and a reading log. So I didn't even read with him yesterday because I was irritated. I'm just like, we're not doing it today. Go to bed. Like I was irritated. <laughs> irritated. Thankfully, my son understood my, um, he, he understood and, um, you know, he was apologizing and stuff like that, but I, w I was still mad. So I had to let God deal with me. On that because if I didn't surrender that to God Lord knows I would not be sitting here making this video for you guys at all um, but yes I'm, I'm quickly just gonna read some things from the Thompson Chain reference and I know you guys are waiting for part two of this bit of this Bible review it's coming I'm just I'm I gotta figure out how, what I'm gonna do but um, again I'm gonna read 12 24 to 20 I'm not even gonna read it 
Um, but again, the, the focus scripture was John 12, 24 to 25. And basically, um, it talks about how there is gain through loss. So it's kind of like when they say there is death, you get um, life from death. Um, when you die of yourself, you gain eternal life. Um, when you surrender to Christ, you gain eternal life. When you surrender to your flesh, you're just damned in a sense. Um, so it says you get gain through loss and life out of death and um, self-sacrifice is what it talks about. Because on the side, if you guys have seen that video, which you can click the eye on the screen and watch that video. Um, on the side of the Thompson Chain reference, on the side of the scriptures, they give you these phrases that help you to um, just kind of shorten the scriptures down a bit. Um, so the fact that they talk about self-sacrifice, life out of death, and... Um, gain from loss is essential and i just think that um on the other side of death or the other side of surrender there is life <clears throat> there is peace there is joy there is love um there is wholeness and when you don't die of yourself you're not whole there will always be a void and i felt that void for years and tried to fill that void with relationships i was dating different guys um partaking in sexual sin just doing what i wanted to do partaking in smoking and partying and drinking and things like that like i just was living my life according to my flesh and not surrendering to god and that is not a place you want to be at because when you surrender to your flesh you literally will spiral out of control and um end up in situations you're not proud of i am very grateful to god that i surrendered when i surrendered um, I'm grateful to God that I allowed him to come into my life, into that space that I had locked up, um, and to move and to bring me out of the darkness because I was, I was in darkness. And like I said, you can watch my old videos and see on my face. Like, it's not even like a physical thing, but spiritually, if you look with your spiritual eyes, you can see in my old blog videos how sad and dark I was. Um, and when I say dark, I don't mean emo or anything like that. But there is a spiritual thing. If you are... I I'm going to just say it's a spiritual thing. You can watch my old videos if you guys want to understand what I'm saying. Um, compared to how I am now. Where I have a brightness to my face. Very light. And um, it's full of life and not death in my eyes. Because my eyes literally just look like death back then. Um, now my eyes have light to it. So... Yeah, but that's pretty much it for today, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm probably going to title this The Other Side of Death. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's all I want to talk about. Again, this was unscripted, so I didn't really know what I was going to say. Um, I just blew it with the Holy Spirit, so hopefully, prayerfully, this helped someone. Um, I also want to start praying in my videos. You guys know I'm working on prayer. <laughs> I've been working on prayer for a minute, and I can pray really well when i'm writing um when i'm in my room but praying on camera praying in front of people i get nervous um and i need to get over that like asap but yeah i i truly pray that this um was able to edify and help somebody this is going to be a series that i start because like i said um, no I, I actually made a video but i deleted it um just to quickly update you guys on what's been going on we're not gonna have i'm i'll make a separate update video so there's gonna be an update video coming um probably after this video or before this video i don't know if it's up already you can just watch the video previous to this but um yeah that's it for this video this is the first of many i'm gonna have more devotional kind of videos like this maybe once every two weeks um because i have so many like video ideas it's just finding the time to record and then edit yeah um <laughs> but um yes so that was it for today I probably will do another one like this. But again, if you guys are interested in the reading plan, it's called Begin Again by Leanna Tankersley. I'll link it down below to the Uversion Holy Bible app. You can also add me on the Uversion Holy Bible app. And um, this is the actual book to that devotional, which I'm actually interested in like reading like ASAP. Before the end of the year, this is going to be on my list. I'm probably going to make like a list of like 24 books to read before the end. Mm. We have three months left, October, November, and December. We'll do six. I'll do a, a like a, a pile of six Christian nonfiction books that are old that came out like a year or two years ago that I need to read. Um, and this is probably going to be one. It's it's really, it looks like it's going to be a great read. Um, and 
the devotional itself is I'm, I'm probably gonna give the devotional like a four star rating it's really interesting and um i really like it mm, chapter six is called let the dead trees grow i'm sorry let the dead trees go so that's probably the chapter that talks about um death i don't know Mm. yeah okay so that's it for this video sorry that this video was too long um but if you guys have any comments questions or concerns let me know if you are not subscribed subscribe if you are subscribed hit that little bell to stay notified thumbs up this video share it with other people um if you have any other kind of devotional ideas let me know i'm gonna just make these random they're probably not ever gonna be scripted um outside of like the notes that i take when i do my actual devotionals but um yeah if you haven't studied John, I highly suggest you study John. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.